Hey guys, this is yet another LM1875 video. It's kind of a follow-up to the other one. Where I did the power measurements at 4 ohm loads. But I wanted to see if I can hit 30 watts using an 8 ohm load. Well, because I don't have enough voltage from my other power supplies, I'm using this toroidal transformer. It has four secondary, so I had to arrange those and clip them up kind of make a jury-rigged power supply and I have a Variac I bought that so I can adjust the power or the voltage okay so when we peaked at 60 volts I do have a bulb limiter in there and I'm getting 16 point Four volts nice clean undistorted output into this 8 ohm non-inductive resistor I'm scoping it right at the resistor so I went ahead and took some measurements and at 50 volts I got a 15.1 volts RMS output giving us 28 and a half watts but at 55.2 which is the maximum I could turn this up to I was getting 16.4 volts RMS and that is 33.62 watts of output nice clean undistorted watts from the LM1875 that's pretty good and are we pushing the chip? Well, not really because it's only putting out about 2 amps. Whereas at 25 watts output with 4 ohm loads, we were getting uh, 2.5 amps. So that's pushing it a little bit more. Now if my power supply could go higher, I probably could measure this at close to its limit its voltage or I should say its supply voltage limit of 60 volts but don't want to push things too much probably would be fine it probably could get close to 40 watts but yeah I think it's pushing things a bit so there you have it the LM 1875 pushing out more than 30 watts of clean power. Now in the real world, you do run into a problem because, you know, at that output, say like 55 volts, that's under load. And if the uh, signal was off, in other words, the amplifier wasn't drawing current, just It'll only be drawing quiescent current. Well, the problem is with a unregulated supply, the voltage could shoot up over 60 volts. So yeah, you kind of squeeze within a window there. You would have to somehow semi-regulate or regulate your power supply to keep it at around 55 volts if you're going to run the chip that hard. But that's it for that. I just thought that was interesting. And now I'll show you a little problem I had with some LM1875 chips. Now can you hear that crackling noise? That's called burst noise or popcorn noise. It's coming from this circuit here. It's just an LM1875 amplifier. I am running it at what's called open loop gain, so it's actually running at an extremely high gain, so you can hear that. Normally it would be so low you couldn't hear it unless you put your ear right up to the speaker, and the camera won't even pick it up. So, so what's the big deal? Well, I was experimenting with running the amplifiers at higher gain so I can use them with a um, headphone player like this. And I was putting my ear close to the speaker to hear the background hiss. 
and see how much hiss I was getting at higher gains. Well, I noticed there was this faint crackle. So I increased the gain to several thousand times. I mean, it's the gain's probably like 90 or 95 dB running open loop, which is crazily high. So, you know, that makes the background noise very audible, and you can hear that crackling noise. So what causes that? Well, it's due to manufacturing problems. From one thing I read about, it can be caused by, you know, if the, you know, the, the process room is not completely clean and there's contaminants, it could be um, defects in the silicon material and charge carriers build up at those uh, defect sites. And apparently uh, when they build up they suddenly pass through and that makes that popping sound you hear. Now to show you it doesn't affect good chips and I'll, I don't care I'll unplug it when the power's on. I'm not in any cons not really worried about it. Now here's a good chip. No problem at all. All you just hear is noise, the hiss. I'm not using a heat sink on this one because I'm running at low voltage and there's no real output signal. So it doesn't get hot. Doesn't matter what supply voltage, you can turn it up, turn it down, it stays. You still get that noise. Okay. The ones with the problem I mark with a red marker you can see there. And I notice they all begin with the JMO5 number. The ones I have I just bought a few weeks ago that begin with 49AH do not have that problem. The good news is that I bought these two or three years ago. So hopefully they're out of the supply chain by now. So you might want to check to make sure your chips are not affected if you do have an older stock of them. But if you build an amplifier with the bad chips, would you notice it? Probably not. It's such a low amplitude. Something and you might notice it a little bit if you we're running at a higher gain with very efficient speakers. But again, I was running these at open loop, which is very, very high. Normally you wouldn't ever run it like that. You know, just so I can demonstrate the noise. But it's there and it is a defect in processing and I just want to bring that point out. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.